but Snap, Snap is back, ladies and gentlemen, at least for the day. Shares are surging after the social media company beat quarterly earnings expectations after the bell yesterday. The company reported a stabilizing user base and posted revenue growth of 36 percent over last year's quarter. Here to discuss more about all things tech is Elevation Partners Managing Director and author of the new book, Zucked, Roger McNamee. Roger, thanks for being here. It's a pleasure to be here. Appreciate it. I want to start with your thoughts on Snap because yeah. the expectations, they completely crushed them in terms of yeah. finally finding their daily active users stabilized and revenue jumping quite considerably. What do you think? I, I, I wish there was a better long-term outlook, right? Because I'd like to see a lot more competition in the tech space than we have right now. But they are up against a foe which outscales them by so much. I just don't think they have a prayer long term. And with the, the inability to hire and retain a management team that's cohesive and can actually stay focused, I think they just make it that much more difficult. To me, the rise in stock price makes perfect sense, right? It, it didn't get a lot worse this quarter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the stock was really beaten down. But how you construct a long term story here is not clear to me. And you know, I, I just, it really disappoints me, but there's nothing to keep Facebook from making Instagram completely smother snap. And to eat their, eat their lunch. But you do mention about, I mean, it is, it is up 20%. Obviously, the IPO price, what, $17? We're seeing it still way below that. But in terms of maybe looking at it as a maturing company, people have been drawing the comparison to Twitter. Uh, you know, because we've seen their user base plateau, but they've been able to make more money per user. Is well, there a similar I story? I don't that? exclude that at all. But but my observation is, it's going to be really hard for them to hire and retain a great management team if the upside is that we're going to do a little bit better monetization <laughs> of business that's not going to grow. Yeah, it's not exactly. Right? Yeah. I'm just saying, I can't concoct a scenario that gets me excited for the long term. As a trading vehicle, you know, anything is possible. As a stock market, but. It's a tough situation, and I can't imagine a worse competitive situation than the one they face against Instagram. It's just, it's brutal. They got no friends, and they got the worst <laughs> enemy you could pick. <laughs> right, <laughs> friends and enemies. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's all about social media. But, I mean, the, the thing here about Snap is just that they beat expectations. People were so surprised by this. That's why the stock popped. Yeah. But they really don't have a good fundamental strategy for growing younger users later on. And there was an analyst from Bank of America who said that, yeah, it's great that it's stable, but it's not a victory. It's just a step forward. That's what everyone's been celebrating. Uh, I guess right now, until people realize that <laughs> the stock doesn't, really, you know, that the company doesn't have a really real strategy to keep this up for the next quarter. For sure. Also, want to talk about Apple. Uh, they just named its third retail chief in seven years, and obviously, uh, they saw their last one depart. I mean, how big of a factor is well, that for Apple? To me, th third chief in seven years—that's not a negative. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you look at Apple stores today, demonstrably, they've done an unbelievable job at keeping Apple stores relevant as the business has gone from rapid growth to this mature situation that they're in now. And the question here is now you're bringing in a serious Apple vet with product chops and operational chops. And clearly Apple's not going to be in a rapid growth situation. What is the game plan that they see going forward? Obviously, services are a huge part of it. And to me, the core question I would be asking now is, is this the time where Apple wants to stop selling iPhones and, in fact, just go to the business of making it a subscription so that everything is in a monthly package mm -hmm. and that they upgrade people on predictable, useful schedules and they make that business a lot more normal and stable. In which case, what does the store look like in that scenario? Right? Yeah. The, the thing that Aaron's created that was so clever was the, the store as a meeting place, as a hub, you know, where the Genius Bar and all of that was a super attractive feature. And it was like, you know. And there are monsters at sales per square inch, right? It was like. Well, that's the thing. Now, whether you can sustain monsters sales per square inch in an environment where, you know, you've completely plateaued on iPhone sales, <laughs> right. to me, that seems like a stretch. Yeah. But, but who knows, right? I mean, they'll still be very high, but they may not. You know, they may not keep going up, exactly. right? Yeah, and the days uh, when Steve Jobs pioneered this whole, you know, spectacle of like the new iPhone, the new product are done. We've all seen that. <laughs> you know, the consumer is not impressed by that. And most consumers just want to stay with the smartphone that they currently have as long as it keeps working. They don't necessarily want to go spend another thousand dollars for something that's just incrementally possibly better. It's well, also hard to kind of, I, I think, get people excited about services too, though, in the same way that you're getting but, someone fired up about hardware. I think that's the wrong, I think people are looking at this wrong, okay? So I look at this and I go, look, 
the iPhone was the single most successful technology product in history, arguably the most successful consumer product in history. The fact that it's no longer growing doesn't mean these are bad guys or the this is dumb. There's never been a product like it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. don't replace the greatest product in history with the next greatest product. It just <laughs> right. doesn't it doesn't it's work tough. that yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And to me what's really impressive about Apple is that they are a services company. Right now the bundle is shifting, right? It used to be buy a new iPhone, get apps and get iTunes. Now it's going to be we're going to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Security privacy uh -huh. and other services that basically are looking out for you. The comparative advantage over Google on that, over Android, is so huge. I think there's a lot of market share to be gained there. I remain bullish on Apple as a long-term stock. I mean, what any of these things do day to day, who knows? But, <laughs> yeah. but for sure. I like their strategy. They're not perfect. There are real flaws. But, but I, I just think their heart is in the right place. And in a tech world where there are people who are still doing the wrong thing at scale, exactly. it's right. really important. Well, yeah, no, I mean, that's a perfect segue and especially <laughs> flaws into I'm the here, last right? thing I want to get your thoughts on because Facebook obviously is celebrating its 15th anniversary this week. Uh, and you've weighed in. It's obviously it's had a lot of up and downs, this company has. Uh, and as you Mostly explain, ups. And, well, yeah, but as you explain in your new book, Zucked, Waking up to the Facebook catastrophe, uh, there it is right there. You, you've talked a lot about the downs. Well, so here, here's what I'm, I, I'm really talking about here. Uh -huh. I have been a tech investor since 1982, and it's hard to have been more optimistic about tech than I've been over that time period, because from 1950 until the last 10 years, everything tech produced made the world better. Steve Jobs used to talk about bicycles for the mind. Mm -hmm. You'd make a computer and it would increase your abilities, right? It would just make you more of a, a capable human being. Mm -hmm. The problem with internet platforms like Facebook, like Google, so it includes Instagram, it includes WhatsApp, it includes uh, YouTube, is that they've built businesses that are based on manipulating attention to sell their advertising. And to do that, they appeal to you know parts of the human psychology that are relatively weak, fear, outrage, things like that. Well, people get habits, right? I always say, when do you check your phone in the morning? Is it before you pee or while you're peeing? Right? Because there's only there's only two choices. It's, it's constant. Either, it's right? constant. Right? I got well, you. Right? Yeah. Well, okay. sure. So, but 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 the truth of the matter is that those habits evolve for many people into addictions, and once people are addicted, they're vulnerable. And if you layer on top of that the massive surveillance that those guys have done in order to make the advertising more viable. They're not collecting data to improve their products for you. Mm -hmm. They're collecting data so they can influence you to do the things but has that are that good for their changed? business. Right. I mean, you're an early investor in Facebook. Oh, no, it's changed a lot. When I was first involved. But they've always, it's, I mean, data no. at least has always been no, there in well, terms well, of a. I was there in 2006 to 2009, so I wasn't there when this business model happened. I mean, I wish I had been, because I think I would have seen this a lot sooner. Uh -huh. But no, when I was there, he had authenticated identity. Mm -hmm. And authenticated identity kept bullies out of the system. He had real privacy control. And those things didn't really go away until after 2011. All right. you know, and by 2013, that's when they integrated the data from the web in their targeting. Yeah. And the reason that that's a problem is look at the new generations. Internet of Things, if you think about Alexa-powered smart devices, Suddenly, you're going to put full-time, 24-hour surveillance where? In your bedroom? The rest of that, I mean, the million-dollar I mean, question is how do you fix it and do they need to go? Does, does Sheryl Sandberg or Mark Zuckerberg I need don't, to be replaced? I think that's the wrong question. Are okay? you still on, on speaking terms with Mark Zuckerberg no, after no, having mentored no, him? No one, no one at Facebook has talked to me since yeah. February of 2017. I haven't communicated to either Mark or Sheryl since October of 2016. And they, I went to them in October of 2016 because I saw across a wide range of things. For the first time in my life, I saw threats, bad actors harming innocent people. Mm -hmm. And I went to them as a friend saying, guys, I think there's something really wrong here. We need to get on it. And they, they were, couldn't have been more polite, but they were going, Roger, seriously, this is not an issue. And I spent three months trying to persuade them, you guys really, you got to do something because you're a trust business. You can't lose the trust of your sure. debt. Um, they weren't interested. So then I spent time with Tristan Harris trying to persuade the company, the other people in the company, this is a real issue. You got to get on it. Now I think we have to go to the people who use the products and to policymakers and force change. And here's what I would tell you to think about. This book is a book to help policymakers think about what they can do. And the most important thing to do is to recognize that these guys are creating the equivalent of, of chemical spills all over society. Yeah. And right now they're not paying the cost of cleaning them up. 
and we have to make them bear that cost. The second thing we got to do here, I'm just showing so everybody. Yes, no, it. it's very clear. Um, it's, it sucked. It is, but the other thing we've got to do is that as users, we have to change our behavior. Yeah, we, we may be addicted, but we do not have to show it's, outrage or fear. It's tough to change fear. it when you're addicted. No, though. no, That's hang on. You know, but there, I mean, there's there's I, a lot here, and I think we got to leave it there and just okay. say if there is more, the book is called Zucked and <laughs> Roger McNamee. We'll come back on the show because I, I want to talk more about it. Thanks for having. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it.